up everyone, Mandy here from On The Grow and today I'm gonna to show you how you can grow speckled pea microgreens just like these. So stay tuned for the full walkthrough. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is soak your peas. So what I've done is I've taken 250 grams of seed and I've soaked them for 12 hours. We found in our space after doing a few experiments that soaking them for 12 hours gives us the best results. And what we've done is we just took a bucket. You can use a smaller bowl if that's what you have available to you and put your seeds into that and then fill some water into that bucket. And we do them just above the pea seed line because these will expand and absorb a lot of that water. So you wanna make sure you give them enough water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these over to my sink. I'm going to drain the water and I'm going to give them a good rinse and I will meet you back at this table. So now that I have rinsed and drained my seeds, let's go over our tray setup. So in front of me, I have three trays, the bottom tray being a 10, 20, no hold tray. This is where we're going to put our bottom water and we want absolutely no holes. Otherwise it's just gonna be a messy mess. So you don't want that. Next we have our mesh 1020 tray, which normally this is where you would put a medium, but we're not gonna do that. And I will go over that with you in just a second. And then lastly, another no hold 1020 tray, which will be placed on top like this and used to put your weight into. Back to our mesh tray. So usually we would put a medium into this tray, but with peas, they grow very aggressively at the root. So you actually don't need to use a medium for this. Now you just take your seeds and pour them right on there. Now you just wanna kinda divvy them up across the whole tray. Make sure it's as even as possible which is a lot easier whenever you're just working with a tray. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna give them a very, very light mist with my little spray bottle here. It's just regular tap water. And then I'm going to take my last tray, place this right on top of those seeds. And we're going to take our 15 pound paver and then we're going to place that directly on top and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this on a empty spot on the shelf our shelves are getting a little bit full <laughs> and we are going to let that germinate so even though we're using no medium we're still going to come out twice a day give a little spritz in the morning and at night and we're going to do that for the next few days just while it germinates and I'll see you once we remove that break today is day four of our pea grow so let me pull it off the shelf and get this heavy brick off and look at that growth so everything is looking really good it looks like we got even germination across the entire tray which is perfect and I want to look at the root structure real quick and look at those roots peas tend to get a very crazy and strong root structure and sometimes they'll get so crazy that your tray will actually begin to lift out of the other tray. So it's pretty cool to look at. So since this is day four and with speckled pea, we know that even though it looks short, it will actually get very tall. So we will not be doing blackout on this. We'll actually be putting this directly into the light, which also means that we're gonna begin bottom watering. So what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and place this over here. And I'm going to grab half a cup of my ocean solution mixture and bottom water this. So let me do that real quick. So let's give them their ocean solution. Make sure those roots get all the way in. Sometimes they tend to stick out a little bit more. So now that I have bottom watered this and I've introduced it into the light, over the next few days, I'm going to be bottom watering this twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. So I'll see you guys on harvest day. Today is day 10 of our speckled pea grow. And as you can see in front of me, it is huge right now. And that's why today is actually going to be harvest day for us because these are at the perfect height and also the appearance overall is exactly where we want them. So with speckled pea, they get these little tendrils and that's one of the things that people absolutely love about this crop. On top of that, as you can see in front of me, 
they get a very high harvest weight. This tray is so full right now that it is beginning to fall over. <laughs> so today is 100% time to cut these bad boys down and see how they taste. You want to harvest these sooner than later because they will begin to get too tall and can start to touch your lights. And on top of that, they will actually begin to get fibrous or kind of woody and it makes it really hard to chew them. So the earlier that you harvest these, the better because you will get the best product that way. So I'm going to get my stuff so I can harvest this. I'll see you guys in just a moment. Now that I have all my harvesting materials, we can go over that real quick. So first I have my knife. We've been loving this knife. It does a great job of just gliding through all of our crops and has become our absolute favorite. Next over here, I have a way of harvesting this crop into and also collecting my data. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my scale and make sure it's all zeroed out. So now we can be begin harvesting this tray. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly grab this and just kind of get a good grip on it, but not super hard. So pea, pea microgreens tend to be a little bit more difficult to cut through than most other varieties. So just be very careful to keep your fingers out of the way. Oh my gosh, look at that. So pea microgreens are extremely beautiful. Oh, and I can smell that nice pea smell too. Smells fresh, very fresh smell. Almost kind of sweet too. Okay, and you wanna to try to avoid getting any of those seeds because if you were to bite down on one of those seeds, you would definitely need to go to the dentist or at least hold your mouth and say ow a few times because it would hurt. So I'm trying to harvest right at the top of the tray. Like see how my knife is just balancing on top of there. I don't want to go any lower than that. And that way I don't get those seeds and everything else in it. Something else I like about pea is when you harvest them, it's really easy to keep them all grouped together because a lot of the other microgreens, they tend to get kind of stuck on each other and everything. And these, you can really present them in a really pretty way. So something I really like about the speckled pea variety is the tendrils on it are very delicate. Um, if you go with a yellow pea, they have a ton more tendrils and you'll actually see across the whole top when you grow them that the tendrils tend to get very entangled with each other. And so it makes it really difficult to kind of get them apart from each other because they're all like this. <laughs> so that's something I like about this variety. It's a lot more clean looking, I guess. Down to our last little section here. It's been a very abundant tray. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we are done harvesting that tray and like i said before people love the heavy harvest weight on this we got 629 grams which is also one pound and 6.2 ounces so that was an absolutely perfect harvest for us so if you let these grow out for longer you can actually get a higher harvest weight but then you might run into it becoming too woody so we just like to harvest ours at about the height that we had them. So that way they're younger and we don't run into that issue. So I'm gonna set some of this product aside real quick and then we will take a peek at the roots. So now, like we said before at the beginning of this video, we used no growing medium in this. And the reason is, look at that root structure. So pea gets probably one of the strongest root structures that I've ever seen on any of the crops that we've grown. And it does so well with absolutely no medium in there. And it just like doesn't move. So whenever you go to clean your tray, a good trick is actually letting this dry. And it's much easier to pull off the whole root structure from this tray. And you won't really have an issue with getting that off. And then another tip is if you take your knife and just slide it across all this and just cut it off just like that, it will also make this a lot easier to clean. And then you can actually just take it from here and just pull them out. Some people like to take the leftover root structure and feed it to their chickens or other farm animals. For us, we like to take that and compost it. So let me move this out of my way real quick and we will take a look at the product. 
I love the way P microgreens look. They are absolutely stunning because they get so many different leaves on them. Like, look at this. Tons and tons of different leaves. And you got that beautiful tendril, which is actually beginning to slightly curl at the end. On top of that, you can just smell this nice sweetness. It's kind of similar to like a sugar snap pea or something like that, but I love it. So let's do a taste test real quick. So let me grab a few for my camera guy and a few for myself. Mm. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic, but every chew that I do is just a nice crunch to it. And immediately after that crunch, you get this nice juiciness. And it almost has like a slight sweetness to it. Very fresh. Overall, the flavor on this is absolutely amazing. It reminds me a lot of a sugar snap pea. One thing I am noticing now is it is a little bit fibrous or woody. So the good thing about peas is you can actually cook them, which will help soften up that woodiness. So I wanted to talk about the nutrients that are in pea microgreens. So pea microgreens actually have vitamins A, C, iron, calcium, and phosphorus. And I actually heard that they have six times the amount of vitamin C as blueberries. That is crazy. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we will get to those as soon as we possibly can. And also we have a Facebook and Instagram, which are both at On The Grow Farms. And our subscribe button pops up somewhere down here. So be sure to subscribe to that for more videos. And we have a website now that has a ton of great information, which is www.onthegrow.net. So everyone keep on growing and keep on believing.